Well, good morning, Aspire Church. Um, as they have said, my name is Jamie, and I'm super excited to be here this morning to uh, to to tell you what God has told us, uh, told me and our teaching team um, uh, to do with this important topic, this important uh, fact of humanity, uh, of being made in the image of God. Um, so th- today we're going to continue in our series, our origin series that Pastor Brian kicked off two weeks ago. Pastor Brian kicked it off by looking at uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, and, and there we walked away with God is the God over chaos. And then last week, Pastor Brian did an awesome job at walking us through the creation account where we got to see that that God is the creator of all things. And this week, we're going to zoom in on one specific part of the creation account, and we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. So um, if you have your Bible, please join me there. Uh, We're going to be reading those verses, we're going to dive into them, and we're going to see what God has for us this morning. And in in real serious note, if you would like, if you don't have a Bible and you would like one, I encourage you to stand up, walk to the back of the the table that says information, and you can actually grab a Bible. If you don't have one, um, you can keep that Bible also. Don't, it's not going to be awkward or anything if you get up and go get one. Because I want you to know that I'm telling the truth. And the only way you can know I'm telling the truth is if you check me. And the only way you can check me is to see if I'm saying what the Bible says. Uh, So here's what's going to happen is uh, today we're talking about being made in the image of God. I'm going to read verses 26 through 28. Then I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to dive in. Okay, so join with me as I read Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 through 28. 28. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over the livestock and over all earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God. He created him male and female He created them and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Hey, let me pray for us. God, I echo, I echo the prayer that was just prayed. Uh, Holy Spirit, we are dependent on you this morning. God, I feel this this heaviness that that you have something very specific for someone here this morning. God, I believe you have something specific for each and every person here this morning. And so I ask that you open our eyes to that. Open our ears to what you have for us to say this morning as, as we look at what it means to be made in your image. And I pray that everybody will lean in and listen to what you have to say. I ask this in, in Jesus' name. Amen. So as, I, as we were singing, it occurred to me that there may be a little bit of a disconnect this morning. You see, I have been thinking about the image of God for three weeks now. And it occurred to me that some of you are like me, who I, how I was two weeks ago. You haven't thought about the image of God one bit. <laughs> That's where I was two weeks ago when our teaching team that meets every Tuesday morning um, to discuss the passages that we talk about every Sunday morning. When we began talking about being made in the image of God two weeks ago, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. And honestly, I hadn't thought about it since 2015. Like, for real. I think I was facing an internal dilemma. You see, like I know the Bible says that we're made in God's image, but you know, I was, I was really battling, uh, you know, it says that, but the image that I have in my mind of, of what God looks like and, and what his repre- representative should look like does not line up with the way the world looks today. So like, let's clear the air. If, if you're there, 
You may not know what to think about the image of God. You may have never thought about the image of God. It's okay. I was there two weeks ago. But this morning, I really believe that, that God has something for us. And this image, made in the image of God is very important. And my goal today is that every person walks away from here knowing and better understanding what it means to be made in the image of God. So I provided some notes for you. And uh, what's that, that's going to be very useful for you to keep up with me because sometimes I can get off track, but I will come back to the notes. And so if you get lost, look on the next point and wait till I say it, and then you can pick back up on that. Um, but hey, another thing about these notes, I think it's super important for you to listen to God. You're not just listening to me deliver a speech this morning. You're, you're actually here to listen to see what God has to tell you. So if you think God's telling you something, write it down on your notes. Think about it. Dwell on it in the weeks to come. It's super important for each person here to be ready to listen to God. So this morning, we're going to ask some questions. We're going to ask who, why, and how. I love questions. I think studying the Bible is essential to know how to ask good questions. And so we're going to begin with who, we're going to move to, to why, and then we're going to end, and then we're going to go to how. So let's dive in. You guys ready to go? I am. Who is made in the image of God? Last week, Pastor Brian did a fantastic job explaining that all things are created by God. God uh, began with the heavens and earth, and he ended with humans, and then he rested. But being made in the image of God is very special. It is very special, and it is specific only to humans. And this is very important. We must know that God did not make the oceans in his image. God did not make the stars as, as magnificent as they are. They are not made in his image. God did not make these mountains behind me that we all love to look at as Pastor Brian finally realized. That's why everybody sits in the back so they can, they can, see, they can see the mountains. Um, God did not make the mountains in his image. As much as I love my dog Hank and how much he gets on my nerves sometimes, but I do love him, God did not make him in his image. Being made in the image of God is specific only to humanity. Humanity, mankind, humans, we are God's prized creation. Of all the magnificent things that he looked at, that he, not he looked at, that he created, and that we get to look at, God reserved his image, his likeness for us. So why do I begin with who? Because it goes, it goes a little further. God, God, it is specific to humanity, but the image of God is for both male and female. Why is that important? It's important for three reasons. First, male and female encompasses every person who's ever lived on the earth. A person is either a male or they're female. Number two, we've messed this up a lot. For centuries, male and female have not been treated equally. The fact that God created male and female in his image is the definition of male and female being equal. We've messed this up, but let's get it straight this morning. In God's eyes, male and female are created equally in the eyes of God, and we are both image bearers of the king. And then the third reason why that it is important that he created male and female, we'll actually touch on in just a moment. But it doesn't end there. Like I said, every person who's ever lived qualifies as a male or a female. So what does that mean? God made you in his image. We have to get this right, right from the beginning. We have to understand that this topic, this idea of being made in the image of God, is not just some idea for, for this big picture of how human, humanity reflects God. This, this idea is specific to each and every one of us because each and every one of us are made 
in the image of God. So this morning, as I'm talking, know that you are found in this message because you are created in the image of God. You know, we all struggle with uh, self-worth. At least I do. There's a lot of times that, that I don't feel worthy. I beat myself up a lot. I, I don't feel as um, I have a high self-esteem sometimes. And, and I would imagine that every person here has felt that way at some time. You know, as I was beginning to, to study this and to realize that and to really grasp the fact that I'm made in the image of God, you know what that did? That took my self-worth and it, and it drastically increased it. To know that, yeah, a man was created in God's image, but you know what that means? That means I'm created in God's image. I'm a prized creation of God, and God has, that cre the God that created everything has reserved his image for me. And he's done the same thing for you. So this morning, let's begin with the correct view of what it means to be made in the image of God. Being made in the image of God means you matter. And your worth comes from God, not from what the world says you are. And, because, and, and by beginning with that, now we can move into the details of what it means to be made in the image of God. And we're going to do that next by, by looking at the question, why? Why did God make man in his image? I think it's pretty simple. God created man in his image to reflect and to represent him in his creation. I love this quote from John Piper. I, as I, I read it, if you've ever heard John Piper speak, you can hear him say it. He says this, it's in your notes. Images are created to image. If you create an image, if you make a sculpture of someone, you do it to display something about that someone. God created man in his image to be reflections and represent, representatives of him in creation. I think this is best understood by looking at the example that, that Israel was supposed to set uh, for us in the Old Testament. So uh, we're, this is an example of how we're made in God's image. And we're, to understand it, we're going to look at Israel and, and how they were supposed to act throughout the Old Testament. You see, when God took the people of Israel out of Egypt... He, he called them to himself, and he called them to be different. The people of Israel were supposed to be different from the world around them. Uh, all other uh, nations had multiple gods. They had gods that, uh, that had graven images and things like that. They ate different foods. But the people of Israel were called to be different. They ate different foods. They had different laws. They were completely different from all the world around them. And that was because God wanted to show all the nations himself through his people. So much so that the second commandment, you guys, we all, we love the Ten Commandments. But I don't think we've ever got number two until now, possibly. God said, don't make graven images of me. Let that sink in. All other nations, they made images of their gods out of stone, out of wood, even, even trees, the mountains, like images, like gods are reflected in images. But God is different and he says, no, do not make images of me. Why is that? Because mankind is the image bearer of God. God created man to be his image. Not to have images, not to have man create images of God, Man was created to be the reflection and the representation of God. So next, the question is, how? How does man reflect the image of God? A lot has been said about this throughout the ages. There are a lot of theories. There are a lot of uh, just stuff that, that people have tried to explain how Man has been made in the image of God. And I'm going to be honest. I don't want to get too, too, too deep in the weeds here. And I'm going to be very careful. Because as we, as we learned a few weeks ago, when we, when we look at a passage of Scripture, we want to draw out what it means in the context in which it is written. And so here, in, when we see the passage where God says that, 
that man is created in his image, I want to look around that passage to see what he means. I don't want to go to a whole bunch of other different places to begin with. I want to see what God says in association with this passage in Genesis of how man is created in his image. And to be honest, God doesn't actually come right out and say, this is how man is created in the image of God. It would be awesome if he did. <laughs> there, would be, there would not be all of this stuff that is written and said about it because we would be like, oh, it's right here. But when we look at the context, we can see that, that God made man in his image and he gave him responsibilities. And I believe those responsibilities are how we are supposed to uh, reflect God's image. The first one is found in verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Let them have dominion over everything created. The word dominion means simply to rule. We are made in God's image because God has commanded us to rule over the earth. We reflect God's image by ruling over the created. It's no secret that man is in charge. Like we can look at all of the things created and I would like, I think man is at the top of whatever pyramid or food chain you want to put at. We're over the earth and that's because God made it that way. But think about it like this. God gave us the ability to have rule and dominion over the earth to reflect his image of how he has rule and dominion over the universe. But it doesn't stop there. The next one is uh, God. Had, we, were, we were called to reflect God's image in creation. Look at verse 27. And God, and, and God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. This is verse 28. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. At the very heart of being made in the image of God is a man and a woman coming together to make more people. So we'll go back just a minute ago where I talked about why it's so important to be that, that God said that he made man and woman because hey, we, we've all taken like science class. It, it takes a man and a woman to make more people. So being made in the image of God at the very core means that people create people. And, and so think about this. God created all things and he gave us the ability to create more image bearers of him. Creation reflects the image of God. Better yet, procreation <laughs> reflects the image of God. Then the next one is found in chapter 2. Verse 5, chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, verse 5, and it says this, When no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused the rain to fall in the land, and there was no man to work the ground. We reflect God's image by working, specifically working the ground. We take care of the earth and we as Christians should do, should be the forerunners of taking care of the earth because God gave us it to rule over and to work it. It's just a side note. This is not in the notes. Christians and Jesus followers are being surpassed by people who don't even love God and taking care of the earth. Like, I have a friend that lives in Portland, Oregon, and he just had to explain to his child why there's a billboard that says stop having babies. Stop having babies. Instead, take care of the earth. Like that is a real billboard in Portland. It's messed up for one thing, but it's, it's messed up because Christians have abused the earth instead of subduing it having rule over it and working the earth. We should be at the forefront of taking care of the earth as Christians because God gave it to us to be his representatives in the earth. We reflect God's image by working 
specifically working the ground. The next one is, is my favorite. And it's found in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Then God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. God created us to reflect his image by being in community. How does this reflect God? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Look back at verse 26 of chapter 1. What's it say? Let us. Then God said, let us make man in our image. I don't know if he called it, but those are plural. You see, God has never been alone. Before anything was created, God dwelt in perfect community as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is a God of community, and he has created man to be his image bearers by creating us to have community. Pastor Brian talked about small groups a little bit earlier. It's essential if we're going to be good image bearers of Jesus it, that we reflect his image by being in community, specifically being in Christ-centered community. If you're living in isolation, you're not reflecting the image of God. I'm going to say that one more time. It, if you're living in isolation, if you think you can go through life alone and by yourself, you're not reflecting the image of God. This is awesome. Like community, like if we've learned anything during COVID, it's, it's that people matter and community matters. I remember Ubering, a, I, I Uber some on the side uh, as a part-time job. I remember Ubering a lady that um, spent basically a year and a half by herself. She didn't have anybody. She was afraid to be around people, didn't want to get them sick. She didn't want to get sick. She was desperate for community. If I learned anything during COVID, it's that my church family, my church community is the source of power to, to, to move through life. I made it, Meredith and I made it through COVID moving to a new city because of the family that is Aspire Church. And if you're searching for community, you may not know you're searching for community. If, you, if you're, you don't feel whole, you very well could be searching for community. And that community, I promise, can be found uh, when, when Christ followers gather together. There's no greater community. Hey, and then there's one more. One more that's not in your notes because somebody told it to me last night. Um, Pastor Brian called me up last night and was like, I'm praying for you. Um, and hey, God showed me this and I wanted to tell it to you. There's one other way that is represented here of how God made us in his image. Uh, if you think back to how God created the world, how did he do it? He spoke everything into existence. And God said, and God said, God used words. Like, think about all the things created. Who uses words? People. We use words. God has created us in his image by giving us the ability to communicate. And we see this right here in chapter 2 when Adam names all of the animals. He uses words. So now let me ask you this question. Do we see all of these still today? Do we see dominion? Do we see creation? Are people still working the ground? Do we have community? Are people still talking? Well, I'm talking right now. I think we still see all of this. But we, I still think there may be a disconnect. I know there really is for me actually. Let's circle back to the original problem that I was facing um, two weeks ago. When I look at humanity, I don't think they reflect God well. I mean, let's, like, we, can take, we can take all five of these, dominion, creation, work, community, words. We can look at all five of those and we can see how man has messed each one of those up. Just for example, let's look at creation. We live in a world today that promotes relationships that are incapable of procreating. It's very specific that God made male and female because he wants 
he, he his plan is to use a male and a female to make more people to be more image bearers of him. A relationship between a man and a man and or a relationship between a woman and a woman is incapable of reflecting the image of God because they're incapable of creating. But this shouldn't surprise us. You know, it, it shouldn't surprise us because when, when we think about the example that I said earlier about the people of Israel and how they were supposed to reflect the image of God, if, if you are Bible people, if you've ever spent any time reading the Bible, specifically the Old Testament, what you see is that Israel always failed to reflect the image of God. Always. I love the example that, that I think puts it to a T is uh, when Israel wanted their first king, this is what they told God. So God was supposed to rule over the people of Israel and be their king and they were supposed to be his people. But this is what the people of Israel told God in, in 1 Samuel. God, give us a king like all the other nations. God, we want a king to fight our battles. We want a king to go on behalf of us. You see, the people of Israel wanted to reflect the world around them instead of the God above them. And we're no different. We look and we want to reflect the, the newest trend, the newest thing. We want to reflect the what is popular in the world around us instead of taking the high road and reflecting the image of God. The Bible says everyone has fallen short of the glory of God. So what does this mean for us? It's really a problem. It's a problem that mankind does not reflect the, God's image well. But there's good news. God had something to say about this. Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. So this passage that I'm about to read um, is God's response to his people reflecting his image poorly. So God got tired of the people of Israel reflecting his image poorly, and this is what he had to tell them. Ezekiel chapter 36, and we're going to begin reading in verse 20, if my Bible will stay open. Verse 20, but when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my name. In that people said of them, these are the people of God, and yet they had to go out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I'm about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate my holiness of my great name, which you profaned among the nations and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I will vindicate my holiness before their eyes. So what is God saying here? Well, God, like God is saying that Israel, you have been poor image bearers of me. You have, gone to, you have gone to all of these nations and instead of promoting my image, you have, you have devalued my image. You have, you have gone and, and you have not been good represent, representatives of my image. And God isn't happy about it. So what does God say he's going to do? God says, I'm done with you. I'm going to act. I'm going to get the holiness that I deserve. I'm going to make sure all the nations see me in the way that they're supposed to. So the solution, God steps in. And just like any problem that we will face today, when Jesus steps in, the problem goes away. So Jesus steps in as the image of God, according to Colossians chapter 1, and the exact imprint of his nature, according to Hebrews chapter 1. God wanted us to know his image so much that he actually took on our likeness. 
Philippians chapter 2 says that, that Jesus humbled himself and took on the form of man so that he could come and show us what God looks like. If we're going to know God, we have to know Jesus. And, and the way we know Jesus is by spending time with him in his word. So if you want to know what it looked like and what it means to reflect the image of God and to, and to if you want to know what the image of God actually looks like, spend time in the Word seeing what Jesus looked like. But Jesus didn't come just to show us the image of God. Jesus came to bring restoration. You see, I like to think of it like this. Uh, well, actually, Pastor Brian last week, he talked about Jesus came to bring reconciliation. See, Jesus came so that all things will begin being reshaped and reformed back to his correct image. That includes you and me. If you are a Jesus follower, you are being conformed to the image of Jesus. That's a promise. We, we read that in, in Romans chapter 8. We read that, that our, our destination is being conformed to the image of Jesus. Think about it like this. Meredith and I have been watching this show, and on the show, they have uh, uncovered a, a very old ancient document. And this document is, is dusty and grimy. It does not look like the original. Uh, but through a process, the, the people in, in the show have they've cleaned off this document. They have began to, to dust away the dust. They begin to clean off the dirt and the grime. And that document is be beginning to look more and more like the original. You see, that's what Jesus does in our life. See, all of us are dusty and grimy and poor reflections of the image of God. But when we come into relationship with Jesus, he begins a process of restoring us back to the original image. That's good news, isn't it? That's good news. So, uh, today, as Jesus followers, you can know this. If you are a Jesus follower, God, through the Holy Spirit, is working in your life to restore you and to conform you to the image of God. And one day, the results will be you will reflect the image of God perfectly. Won't be here on earth, but it'll happen. So now as we, as we come kind of to the end um, and we think through the image of God, well, we know that, that the image of God is, is specific only to humans. That means that the image of God is specific to you. The image of God, God created us in his image to be good image bearers of him, to reflect and represent him well in creation. We do that through, through dominion, through ruling the earth, through, through creating, through working, through having community, through, through speaking. Though we all, though, though we do it poorly sometimes, as Jesus followers, we know that God is working on us to do it well. So today, what is the response to all of this? Like most of the time we come here um, and we get information, but I want us to, to get to leave with something that's applicable. Well, first, first let, me, let me talk to you. If, if you are not interested in anything that I've said today, if, if you're not even interested in God and don't even know if you're interested in God, well, first, let's... let's back away from the image and let's just think about creation. Do you think all of this happened by accident? I don't. Like you, your life, your situation, who you are, it's not an accident. And this morning, I hope that, that you walk away knowing and thinking that I could be, maybe I am made in the image of God. And if that's true, what should my response be? Was to reflect God well. But the only way to do that is, is through being in relationship with the person of Jesus. 
You see, what we're going to talk about in actually two weeks is that, that man is separated from God. And, and we're separated, and that's why we don't reflect His image well. But Jesus came to, to close that separation and to make it a way where we can be connected back. So today, if, if you're unsure and you'd love to talk more about uh, what it means to be made in the image of God, is this all true? Have we got a next steps table? And there'll be someone there to talk to you. Or you can come talk to me. You can talk to Pastor Brian. You can talk to Luke. We, any of us would be willing to, to talk more about this with you. But then most of us here are Jesus followers. And we're here to worship God. We, we love coming to worship. We love listening to sermons. But sermons have to make it into our week. So what can we do this week? To, to be better image bearers uh, of God, to reflect Him better. And it begins by examining ourselves. Ask yourself, think about all the areas of life, whether you're a mom, a dad, a husband, a wife, you're a, a co-worker, you're whatever you are, are you reflecting the image of God well? Sometimes that's hard to answer. But there's good news. God's not done. God's still working on each and every one of us. And if you identify an area in your life where you're not reflecting God well, well, spend time with God about and, and talk to Him about that area, and I promise you He will help you reflect Him better there. But then there, there's another, another uh, way that we can respond today. And, and I'm going to uh, share a quick story with you. Um, I told you I haven't thought about the image of God since 2015. Well, let me tell you about 2015 when I got to um, really see the image of God for the first time. So in 2015, I, I got to take a semester trip and go live in Egypt. And for those of you who, who don't know, Egypt is a majority Muslim country. And with that culture, the, the ladies cover most of their body, if not all of their body, with um, their clothing. And so it's very different than the United States. But while I was there, uh, God taught me something. He showed me something and he taught me something. First, I have to admit that God taught me that the world had taught me how to look at women. Like the, the world teaches me to look at a woman of her physical beauty, whether she's pretty or whether she's not. That's what the world says. Well, when I got over to, to Egypt and I'm walking around and, and all of the girls are, are covered, well, that was taken away. Thankfully, God took that away from me. Because you can't see physical beauty. You can't see that. So as I walked around for, for four months, I, I walked around and I was really just taking it all in. Like as a new culture, I began to notice something. I began to notice that as a lady would walk by me, I, I looked at her in a different way. I looked at her in a way that I really believe God looks at her. I couldn't see physical beauty. I couldn't see deformities. I couldn't see anything. All I could normally see was, was their eyes. And as I began to walk around and, and look at people, God began to, to stir me and to convict me to say, look at these people the way I look at them. Don't look at people the way the world says. And, and, and you know how God wanted me to look at some of the people, all of the people that I came into contact with in Egypt? These are people made in my image and they don't even know it. They don't even know who I am. They are special to me. I love them. They're made in my image and they don't even know it. So today, if, if as Jesus followers, the number one way we should walk away from this message is this this week and for as many weeks as you can do this walk around looking at people 
not as the way the world sees them, but as the way God sees them. And ask yourself, does that person know that they're made in the image of God? Because they will not ever reflect the image of God until they meet Jesus. And as Jesus followers, God has commanded us and get, we are not only his reflection and representation, but we are his ambassadors. We go out to people. We speak this good news that we are made in the image of God. And that image is perfected in the person of Jesus. So this week, I challenge you. Look at people the way God sees them. Not as the way the world says. Let me pray for us and then the, the worship team will come up and, and we'll continue to worship God. Lord, I just thank you so much that, that you have reserved your image for me. God, that brings weight. That brings urgency. God, that brings worth and that brings purpose. And that worth and that purpose is for each and every single person that can hear my voice this morning. God, allow us to have your eyes. Allow us to walk into our jobs this week and to look at people the way that you want us to look at them. God, break our hearts that they don't know you, that they don't get the opportunity to know that they are made in the image of God. God, allow us to be that opportunity to be that spokesperson for you, to, to share that, that they have worth and that they're made in your image. And I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be silent. We're going to shout out.